What up, folks? It's Alex here. It's, it's Alex. Alex. It's Alex here. And welcome to Mr. Alex Tech. <laughs> this week, we've got a bit of a Halloween special, as you can probably tell. We're going to be taking a look at some easy, fun, and cool looking Halloween tricks, effects, and techniques. Oh, bitch, so, bitch, let's bitch, open DaVinci Resolve and take a look, shall we? So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, we're on the edit tab, and this timeline you're looking at the moment is that introduction footage. Now, as you can see, there's nothing too complicated going on here. There's no fusion, it's just some simple effects, some basic cuts, an overlay, and an adjustment clip. So, let's get into it. Now here's the footage as it comes out the camera. It's the same lighting setup I always use, except for the fact that I changed the color of the background and I lowered the height of my key light just to give me some slightly stranger shadows. So, let's give it a quick colour grade. I'm going to jump straight into the colour tab. Now, as always with colour grading, there's loads of different ways to do things. I'm not a professional colourist, this is just a quick, dirty way that I achieved the look I was going for. So the first thing I wanted to do was to add loads and loads of contrast. So to do that, I'm going to use the curves. So down on this little menu in the middle, I'm going to click on this left icon here, which is the curves, to open this box here. Now, if you've never worked with curves before, You've got this line going from bottom left to top right. Bottom left is your shadows and the top right are your highlights. So you can click at any point and move around so I can bring my, my shadows up or I can bring my shadows down. Same for my highlights. I can just mess around with the curves like so. Now what I want to do is to bring my shadows down but leave my highlights exactly where they are. So to do that, I'm just gonna click right in the middle to add a little point here. Then I can just bring these down as you can see, this top half stays exactly as it is, so my highlights remain untouched, but I can just bring my shadows down, creating loads and loads of cool contrast. So I'm gonna go with something like that. Now the next thing, that looks cool, but it's too saturated for my liking, so I'm just gonna lower the saturation. So in the bottom left, I'm gonna click on this number one, and then I've got saturation here. I'm just gonna reduce this until I'm happy. I'm gonna go with about 30. So that's starting to look pretty cool. The next thing I want to do is just add a blue tinge to some of the shadows. So still within this bottom left area, click on this drop down. make sure that you're on log. You've got color wheels here and then you've got shadow. If I click on this center dot, I can drag this around, which just adds different colors to my shadows. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just reset that. I'm gonna drag this over to the right just to add a blue tinge to the shadows, which will contrast loads with these red lights in the background, giving us a really cool look. So I'm gonna go with that, perfect. I'm gonna jump back into the edit tab. So we've taken the footage from looking like this to this with a real simple, quick color grade. Next up, we're gonna have a look at this crazy head movement exorcist style effect. Now this is footage in real time. I'm just pulling silly faces, grimacing and moving my head around doesn't really look that scary. So all we need to do to make it look a little bit weirder, a little bit more horror film, is to speed the footage up. So I'm gonna right click on the footage on the timeline. I'm gonna to go to the change clip speed. And we're just gonna change this speed at the top. I'm gonna to go with 500%, but feel free to experiment with whatever you like. So we'll hit change. And if we go to the beginning and hit play, there we go. So it looks much weirder much scarier, much more like a horror film. Now there's something else you can do here to really sell this effect. So that may be good enough. I use that throughout the introduction on some clips where it's just sped up footage. But to really sell it, what we can do, open up the effects library, click on open effects, scroll down until you see this resolve effects stylized area, and then grab stop motion and apply that to your footage. Give the footage a click, Open up the inspector, go to the open effects tab, and you'll see the stop motion parameters in here. Now by default, the frame repeat is set to five. And what that means is it will repeat the first frame five times, and then it'll move on to the sixth frame, and then repeat that five times. And it gives you this stop motion sort of janky slideshow sort of look, which does look pretty cool. Experiment with this different frame repeat until you're happy with an effect that works for you. And you could just use that footage as is. But one last thing to really sell it, underneath there you've got this blend mode. If you've never used the blend modes before, zero means we're seeing this stop motion effect. That's all we're seeing, we're just seeing this effect being applied. If I change that to one, 
We're no longer seeing the stop motion. It's being 100% blended, which basically means you can't see it. And we're just seeing the raw footage underneath. So to get a really great effect, set that to 0.5, and you'll see you get this really cool ghosting effect because we're seeing the raw footage being played in normal and we're also seeing this stop motion effect being applied as well. And if I hit play, gives us a really cool effect with these ghosts and movement and all sorts of stuff. And that's what I used in my final edit. Now, of course, you could just place that footage wherever you want it on your timeline and use it as it is, like so. Or another option, put it above some other footage like I have here, and then give your top footage a click open up the inspector, you've got the opacity, just lower that, and then you can blend different pieces of footage together to give a real ghostly sort of look, like so. And again, that's what I used for part of the introduction. So next up is an audio effect, and it's the one I used in the introduction to create these really cool little echoes. So here's some footage of me what just up, saying, folks? what up folks? It's just in my normal voice, up, it doesn't sound all that exciting. So what we're gonna do, Still within the effects library, this time we're going to come down to the audio effects area and we're going to grab the echo and we're just going to drag that onto our audio like so. And then this box will appear. From the top drop down, it's currently set to default. I'm just going to change that to slow crossover. Now there are loads of other options in here and I'll be completely honest, I'm not an audio engineer. I don't understand most of them, so I'm just going to leave them as they are. But of course, feel free to experiment and see what works for you. I'm just going to close that box, and then if we hit play now, what up, folks? What up, folks? What up, folks? We've got an echo what which up, pings what from up, what up, folks? left to right and sounds really cool. If we want to make any adjustments to that audio effect, we can give it a click. We can open up the inspector, go to audio, scroll down to echo, and then we've got all the options in there as well. So you can just apply this what echo. Up, what up, folks? What up, folks? To add an echo to your voices, again, just really helps to sell the spooky horror film effect. Next up, we've got this cool flickering ghostly effect. And again, it's dead easy to do. So, here I've got two pieces of footage. This first clip is of just my empty room without me in it. It's really handy to take plenty of this so you've got it to cut to and from in your edit. And then the next clip is just of me looking at the camera. Now what we need to do to do that effect is we're going to we're going to come to the point where these two clips meet. We're going to grab the second clip, the one with me in it. We'll drag it up so it's on the track above and we're just going to move it to the left so there's a bit of an overlap. And then what we're going to do, move our playhead over to this top track and then using the right arrow key, we can just move forward a couple of frames or a frame, whatever you want. We'll do a quick cut. We'll do a few more and we'll cut and then a few more. We'll cut again. So here we've just got four cuts and then we can just delete using backspace, not the delete key because we want those spaces to remain. And now we've got these gaps here. And then if we hit play, real simple flicker, and then I appear and it moves straight on to the next track. Easy peasy. And then just using those basic effects, you can start to build up a timeline that looks something like this. So this part of the footage here was simply sped up. This footage here was obviously sped up just using that stop motion as well. Then we've got that simple flickering effect there. And then it cuts to me. And then here we've simply adjusted the opacity so you can see this ghostly figure in the background. So it's starting to look pretty good, but there's a couple of last things we can do to really sell the effect. So first things first is to add an overlay. So the overlay I used is down in the description below. You can, it's completely free. You can go and download it and use it as you wish. It's a simple JPEG image file. So all you need to do is download it and then import it into DaVinci Resolve. I've got it here. It's just labeled as 2.jpg and I can just drag that onto my timeline and put it above all of my other footage. Now, if I just move my playhead, it looks something like this at the moment, which is not ideal. So first things first, give it a click, open up the inspector, and then all we need to do first of all is just to zoom in so it completely fills the frame like so. Now, because it's just black and white, there's a really easy way that we can make this transparent so you can see all the footage underneath. Give it a click, still within the inspector, you've got this composite mode at the very top. It will be currently set to normal. Just change that to add, 
and then all of the black areas will go transparent, revealing our footage underneath. From here, you can also just lower the opacity if you want to get this overlay looking exactly as you want it to. So that's starting to look much better already. But then there's two things I like to add as well. So at the moment, it looks okay, but you can tell that my camera is on a tripod. There's no movement at all. So we can just make it look a little bit better by adding some fake camera movement. So we're gonna open up the effects library. We're gonna come down to the toolbox, expand that, and then we're gonna to go to effects. And we're gonna grab an adjustment clip and we're gonna drag this above everything. So above all of our footage and our overlay, and we'll just drag that out like so. And then still within the effects library, we're gonna go down to open effects. We're gonna scroll right down until you see this area here, resolve FX transform, and we're gonna grab camera shake. Click and hold and drag that onto your adjustment clip. Now, if we hit play, you can see it's shaking around like so. Looks pretty cool, but it's just a bit too strong, so we just need to lower the effect. Give the adjustment clip a click. Click on the inspector, top right, then click on the open effects tab, and then you can see all the controls in here for the camera shake. Now, experiment with these. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but there's loads of fun to be had. I will cover the basics though. The top three, motion scale, speed scale, and then motion blur. Motion blur is obviously the motion blur. I'm gonna leave that as zero. Motion scale affects how much the camera actually moves. So see if I put that up, it moves around even more. And if I lower that, it moves around less. And then the speed scale is the speed that it moves. So I actually want this to come right down. I'm gonna go with about 0.25 on the motion scale and the speed scale. Because I want it to be relatively subtle. And now we've got something that looks like this. That camera movement just really adds to the effect and doesn't look like it's locked on a tripod, which just makes it look a little bit more dynamic. Now the very last thing we're gonna add is some flickering lights. And now that's within the same section in the effects library, we've got this flicker addition, which is gonna do the same thing. We're gonna drag that onto our adjustment clip and let go. And then if we hit play, we've got this flickering light effect. Now that may be good enough for you. You may like it as it is, but if you wanna make any changes, we just do the exact same thing. Click on the adjustment clip in the inspector, in the open effects. You're probably gonna see camera shake there by default. Just double click on the word camera shake at the top to minimize that. And then you've got flicker edition here. Double click to open that. Again, just play with the settings in here. There's loads to mess with. But again, to cover the basics, you've got the flicker type. You can choose between lift, gain, gamma, and vignette. And then you've got the range, the speed, the smoothness, and the randomness. The range is the range between the light flicker and then the flicker being off. So I increase. So if I set that all the way to one, you can see it'll flicker loads. That's too strong, so we'll just reset that. The speed is obviously the speed of the flicker. The smoothness is how smooth it transitions to the flicker being on and off. And then the randomness is just the randomness of the flickering. So I'm gonna leave the speed and the smoothness as it is. I'm gonna bring the range right down to about 0.07, because I don't want it to be too bright at all. But I am gonna increase the randomness scale. So it's nice and random, and just flickers all over the place. And now I've got something that looks like this. So you combine all those different effects with a simple free overlay and some camera shake and a flicker edition. And you've got yourself a really cool looking horror intro or clip or whatever you wanna do with it. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this special spooky Halloween edition. If you did, thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, please do let me know down in the comments section below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, you wanna see a little bit more, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks ever so much for watching folks. Take it easy, I'll catch you next time. See ya. Ooh, it's boogie. Boo.